All right, everybody, let's do <clears throat> a little weekly update video. I apologize I'm missing the live this Sunday. I just was a little under the weather. I'm feeling better now. Well, it's been a heck of a season. I feel like I've been uh, sick for the last couple months in some capacity or another. But uh, first thing I did is back here on these rear wheels. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone had ever noticed, but these rear wheels actually or the whole axle was was narrower than the front axle so the rear wheels kind of uh, they didn't stick out as much as the front wheels did and uh i don't know why that is i i did talk to a four-wheel drive shop at some point and they were saying that uh, it probably had uh, a later model ford axle on the front and uh i guess they were wider at the time i can't independently verify that but that's what i was told but nonetheless I put on two inch spacers mostly just for cosmetic reasons to kind of even out the width of the wheels but it had a uh, surprising benefit in the handling of the van uh, the van had always done pretty good and since i've owned it i've kind of incrementally made various changes which kind of improved the handling and the ride of the van itself um, but one thing that it still did to a minor extent was wander a little bit you know if you we're driving down the road you might have to mine the steering wheel a little bit more uh, but if interesting thing and i didn't expect this but i guess it makes some sense is when i <clears throat> kind of even out the width of those wheels it resolved most of that problem and i'm guessing it must have been just a a track issue with with how it functioned with the front wheels but uh if any of you are in that very unique situation i was uh, might be something to look into and those are just uh, some two inch hub centric wheel spacers. Let's go jump on inside here and see what we've got done. Like I said, I'd uh, most this week I had been working on some mechanical stuff, which I'll talk about later, but I did get a few things done. All right, so first off, on the two side windows, I put in covers right there. Now what that is, is that's a two inch block of EPS or uh, insulation, foam board insulation. That's the stuff that has like the aluminum foil side on one, on well, on one side. And just like I've done in a lot of my truck campers, I actually wrapped it in a fabric. That's a dark brown fabric on the inside. And then on the back, it's, I, I have uh, some black fabric and put that on the back. And so far, I'm still kind of evaluating. I just got this done last night. It just looks like a really darked out window from the rear or from the outside. Um, now, um, everybody's different. Some people love a ton of light. I kind of like a, a cave-like feel in my camper. Um, so I wanted to kind of shut out some of the light, give me a little bit more privacy. Uh, the nice thing about these is they're insulated. So you're adding a little layer, layer of insulation, but additionally, they're very easy to remove. They're basically just kind of held in with uh, friction right now. So, but uh, we'll try that out, see how that works. And um, maybe I can replace them if I don't like them, go with another option. Uh, I think I showed you guys this. So we got the, the wooden door slats on this side. And then on this side, I got the wooden slats and then I just made a little table and it uses those same kind of legs like I used over there. A little quick trip to, or a little quick tip to making these uh <clears throat> cover the door on these wood or you can't talk you guys know what i'm trying to say um my doors and i'm assuming most vans had a very thin little piece of plywood uh, that covered it up so what i actually did is i actually saved that piece of plywood and uh i cut out all of the planks you know the appropriate width and as you guys can see here i did a i did my lap joint and I just used a little bit of caulking and laid down those planks, stapled them from the rear with a, a narrow crown staple that would obviously not come through the front here, and uh, attached them all to that piece of plywood and then screwed that piece of plywood right in the door like it was before. Um, it was a real easy way of doing it. And then if I ever want to pull these door panels off for some reason, um, it's, it's, I just un, or I just removed those screws. And of course, you know, <clears throat> I had to relief it a little bit for like the handle here. Um, or, uh, and I'll put a, I'm gonna make a nice leather strap to, to close it there, but that worked out really well. Uh, these doors, uh, insulated on the inside there. I put the thin slit inside the door cavity. And then of course the upper part is the EPS, which we talked about. And then, uh, that little table there is going to be real handy. All right, let's jump on inside. So 
even though I didn't get a ton of progress done this week, I still got a lot here. And uh, what I hope you guys recognize is um, I got the oil finish on all of the interior wood here. And uh, it just, uh, in my opinion, I think it just looks really good. Um, it, what The product I use is called Osmo, O-S-M-O, and the number I use is 3021. All of their products are kind of given a numerical representation. Um, but it's the, I think they called it the clear gloss. But it's an oil finish. Um, and uh, man, it just pulled out every knot, every little feature in the cedar. And I think it looks really good. Um, it uh, makes it, it darkened up the wood just a little bit, but not in a not in a negative way. I, I'm sure some of you guys sometimes with soft woods, you can uh, you know put like an oil poly or something on them, and it'll kind of give them a less attractive yellowish tinge. But this just is very beautiful, and it's a it's a it's an oil wax, <clears throat> excuse me, oil wax finish. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily sit on top. So the wood is still very smooth. Um, lots of ways to apply it. I've seen people do a number of things. I just took a brush and brushed it on and let it sit for a little bit and came back with a uh, microfiber style rag and just uh, kind of rubbed it into the wood. And uh, that worked out really well. Um, they call it a gloss, at least the way I apply it, or at least I've not been able to get like a gloss on it, but it's not as dull. I've used Osmo a lot of times on other campers and it comes out, there's some of them that come out with like a little bit of a duller finish. Uh, this is not as dull, but uh, man, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes film um, makes things look better or worse. And I will say this, this is, this finish and how this looks in here is one of those things that definitely looks better in person. I think it looks good on camera too, but, uh, and then uh, I almost forgot here, the um, cushions, got the cushions in. I think that really brings together that rear section. Uh, I have my own unique method of making cushions. It's pr <laughs> it's probably not the most, uh, eh, whatever. Um, they, they have a very unique look when I'm finished with them. And I have to admit, for this space, I think they look great and they work out really well. <clears throat> I made them in different segments because, of course, all the various flip-up doors on the seating area there, it's handy to access them. Down here, I don't think I showed you guys this. Uh, this is kind of my little control panel down here. <clears throat> I'm still wired in a few things, but uh, uh, so we've got the MT50, which is the solar monitor down there with that little green light on top. We've got a couple outlets, one that's off the inverter, one that's off shore power. Shore power is black. Uh, this white thing above here, right there, that's the remote control for the inverter. So you just long press that button and it'll... it'll activate the upper white outlet there and then down there at the bottom i actually don't have it wired in yet but that's a it's got a uh a USB C, a cigarette lighter socket an outlet and it also has a um a little voltage gauge so i can just kind of see what my battery system voltage is at a glance i think we've talked about all this woodworking in here but uh yeah i mean i'm behind schedule a little bit but that's fine i had no specific schedule just some some loose goals there but the uh the coach portion is uh, darn near done uh like i said i have a little bit of wiring left uh, i i am gonna make a door for this so i gotta make that door real quick i'll probably knock that out today and i still have a little bit of trim and stuff right here on the very front and then my next step is up here in the uh i guess you'd call it the passenger compartment I'm going to, uh, well, I talked about that before, but I got a little bit of things there, but it's all going well. And, uh, I think this, uh, I think this is looking pretty darn good. All right, guys. And, uh, this is going to be me being a big baby and complaining about my, let me come on over here and sit here. Ugh. I'm just going to complain a bit. If you don't mind listening to me about my uh, let's talk about mechanical work. Um, so uh, I've, I've saw so just straight up. Uh, I'm not a big, 
I, I don't necessarily enjoy working on cars um, uh, because I'm uh, uh, because I <laughs> didn't have a lot of money when I was younger, and then as I've gotten older, I've kind of lost had some bad experience in mechanics and kind of lost trust in them. I pretty much do. Uh, all of my own mechanical work, uh, especially for something like a project here in the van. But with that being said, uh, it's not my favorite activity to do. Uh, but slowly, I've been doing work on the van. I mean, it, it definitely needed uh, all the maintenance caught up. And um, somewhat recently, I noticed that the fuel pump had a little, or not the fuel pump, the water pump had a little bit of a leak coming from the bottom. And what I when I researched it, this particular van, uh, the 5.8 liter, the 351 Windsor, another way of saying it, has a unique water pump and then it has a backer plate that bolts on before the water pump bolts to the timing cover, which is bolted to the block, of course. And uh, the leak, from what I could tell, and it tr proved to be true, was coming from that connection point between the pump itself and that backer plate. So... Um, it's not a, a massively huge project, but it's a little bit of a project to get in there and pull off all the various things you need to, to get to that water pump. So I bought a Motorcraft one, an OEM water pump, and I bought, and I figured while I was down in there, I put a new belt on and tensioner and idler arms, and I changed a couple hoses, which uh, uh, probably were at the end of their life and were in really hard positions to get to. So I figured I'd change those, especially me being in the desert here, I always want to make sure the uh, cooling system is up. And I also changed out the fan clutch while I was in there just to make sure that, uh, that was solid, but um, uh, I had a little fiasco, which kind of almost broke me a little bit. Uh, I get everything off, everything goes smooth, um, and I, I put on, long story short, I had to put the water pump on a couple different times because it kept leaking uh, from that backer plate to the water pump itself, and uh, it was very frustrating. I had I jumped online, and it sounds like I'm not the only person who's had those problems, and it sounds like that's a pretty common leak point, so that might be a, a kind of a negative design aspect of uh, at least the water pump section on this particular engine but it was very frustrating to put it all back together and then develop a leak and take it apart and put it back together um, and in the end I, I did get it fixed I'm not really sure exactly why it was leaking um, I think the combination that's best is uh, Felpro gaskets and no RTV of course that seems like a big debate RTV or not but uh in the end, uh, what I thought might take me an afternoon turned into a uh, two and a half day fiasco, but I uh, got the water pump in, it's not leaking. Uh, but sure enough, uh, <laughs> another leak generated someplace that's uh, uh, in the process there. Um, I think it's, it's as we stand right now, it's not exactly re revol or, uh, resolved, but I think I will in the future. But uh, I'm, I'm being a big baby and, and kind of just chatting more than anything, but sometimes uh, when those mechanical repair repairs don't go your way, they can, uh, they can be really a, bo a bear, but, uh, but we'll get her done. And I think for the most part right now, we get everything resolved. So, but the van's coming well. Uh, I really appreciate you guys, all of your well wishes. Uh, it's really nice. The community of all of you who leave comments and chat and send me emails and, and all that kind of stuff. I appreciate it. And I hope, I really do legitimately hope everyone out there is doing well. And, uh, We'll, uh, I'll be in for this Sunday's live and we could chat then. Um, I had a uh, viewer who sent uh, a couple questions about a couple things. I'll touch on those if anyone else has some questions. Actually, I've had a couple people send me questions and uh, um, I'll, I'll touch on a couple of those in the live this week and uh, we'll go from there. But guys, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of the build inside here. Uh, I'm pretty darn happy with it and I think it's turned out well. So I'll catch up to you guys later.